Hey everybody, Motorpoly59 here. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, divisions between groups of people, whatever those groups are. Uh, my wife and a couple of my daughters were having a discussion uh, last week about how uh, these groups are divided, and I brought up the deal that Union Pacific had because it was most closely associated with that. Um, last week I had a viewer on my other channel, Mark Clay McGowan, send me a note and ask me if I could go down to uh, the yard in Bakersfield and see if I could catch this uh, Union Pacific locomotive on this train with this new fancy paint job and it was called uh, the One Locomotive and it, and it had this uh, paint job. I, I took a still picture of it and but I, I didn't keep it in my library or I'd show it to you right now but a lot of you might know what I'm talking about. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know what it represented. I hadn't heard anything about it. And uh, so I said, eh, okay, so I live here. So I drove down there, shot some videos of it. I still didn't know anything about it. It was on this train. And I heard a couple of uh, comments from people about it uh, being the, the gay train or the queer train or whatever they called it. And I still didn't know. So I did a little uh, research and found out that it was actually uh, celebrating uh, 20 years since the Black Employees Network at Union Pacific came into existence. And uh, that uh, started, they ended up with the, the Black Employees Network, the Hispanic ne Employees Network, a Gay Employees Network, a This Employees and the That Employees, and the next thing you knew, everybody had their own little group within Union Pacific. I believe I saw something in parentheses in the reading I was doing about it called ERG. I don't know what that stands for, but it is probably something that has put all those groups uh, together. I don't know. Maybe you know. If you know, leave me in the comments below. I'd be interested to know. Because uh, I'm not going to do any research about it anymore because I'm not going to spend any more time on it because I don't care. And while I was having this discussion with my family, I brought, I'm not specifically that locomotive, but I brought up the all these different networks that Union Pacific had, and it annoyed me because I, I couldn't understand, and still today can't understand, why couldn't or can't we all just be employees of Union Pacific Railroad? Why do we have to be black? Why do we have to be Hispanic? Why do we have to be white? Why do we have to be anything? Why can't we all just be employees? And I feel the same way about what the government's doing. Uh, why can't we all just be Americans? That's what I want. I don't care what color you are. I don't care what gender you are. I don't care about your sexual orientation. Just don't be an asshole. And we'll, we'll do just fine. I really, really honestly don't care. And people are so afraid now to say or do anything because they're afraid they're going to offend one of these groups. And these groups are always the ones that are making the most noise about equality. But equality isn't really what they want. Because at the railroad, it didn't matter what color you were, what gender you were. If you were working there, if I was in the signal department, if you were a signalman, or a, you know, if you were a, if you had the same job I had, you made the same money I did. It didn't make any difference if you were a man or a woman or black or white or Hispanic or whatever. It didn't make any difference. And yes, we did have women who worked in the signal department, not very many of them, because it's a very difficult job, and I'm so glad I'm retired. Uh, I'm not going to get in trouble for saying anything. I might get punched in the mouth or something, but I can deal with that. But these groups of people, like I said, are always the ones who want equality, but it doesn't matter if the company gives them what they perceive as equality. It doesn't matter if it's the government. It doesn't matter if it's the media. It's never going to be enough because there's always going to be someone in one of those groups or a small faction within those groups that make sure it's never enough, that rile people up and start saying things to get those lines of division drawn more darkly. Because sometimes those lines of division in my lifetime have gotten where you couldn't even really see them anymore during the George W. Bush administration. Race was not not an issue anymore. You know, we had Colin Powell and Condoleezza Rice. We had all these very, very powerful African Americans, and they were in these uh, large positions. They were coming into power in, in companies. Women were running companies like Hewlett Packard, and it, 
just really wasn't an issue until Barack Obama came along and made race an issue again. Uh, the first president I ever saw that took sides, now I know presidents prior to my being alive took sides historically in many issues, but that had pretty much, that had pretty much all gone away. Barack Obama was told by his handlers, you need to incite these issues again. You need to get cause these to flare up, and he did, and so did his wife. And they stood there, their entire presidency of Barack Obama, and pointed those lines of division out, whether they were race, sex, sexual orientation, didn't matter. They would drag people in and make sure that those that that got stirred up and Black Lives Matter came along as a, as uh, some of those things being added together and the gas was poured on these fires and it just hasn't stopped. Uh, Donald Trump tried to right the ship. He tried to get these things uh, stopped and it was starting to work and they hated that. The left hated that and as long as the left are running things, as long as they're in charge, these lines of division are never going to go away. It doesn't matter. They can talk about how much they're going to change things, and they're going to change nothing. They've changed nothing. There's a, one group in the United States of America who are better off because of Democrat policies over the last 50 years than they were 50 years ago. Nothing's changed, and it's not going to change. They don't want you to stop hating people. They don't want African Americans to feel like they're part of anything because they want to be the rescuers. They want to be the heroes. I don't know. It's disheartening. Um, as long as the Democrats are in charge, nothing's going to change. They have been promising change for the poor since LBJ's war on poverty and great society. They have been promising things to African Americans. They have been promising things to women for 50 years and they have changed nothing. Nothing is better for anybody today than it was 50 years ago. I don't know. I hate hate. <laughs> I wish hate would just die because it's senseless. It serves no purpose. Uh, it's, it is, people say, oh, politics is the cause of war. Money is the cause of war. No, the cause of war is hate. Uh, if someone hates somebody enough, they will do whatever they can to get rid of the group they hate. And right now, the United States government is fomenting hate between these groups because that's the only way they stay in power. Once people start getting along, once once people, you don't have to love each other. We don't have to do that. All we have to do is get along. And everybody knows we can do it. But the Democrats have no interest in that. So as long as they're running things, there will be no peace. There will be no love. What do you think? Uh, what do you think about all this division? You think I'm right? You think I'm all wet? Let me know in the comments below. Shoot me an email at motorpoet59 at gmail.com. Like, share, subscribe, click on the bell if you want to be notified of future content. I'll see you all later.